Welcome! This is our sketch organized solve steps for our final of the semester of Maxwell's Correction to Ampere's Law. So this is going to look very, very similar to both the original Ampere's Law for our sketch and this half of the organized. And it's going to look somewhat similar to Faraday's Law because the magnetic and electric fields are roughly swept. We have a mu naught epsilon naught instead of a minus sign, and that's pretty much the big differences. So in our sketch step, for Faraday's law, we wanted two perspectives of the magnetic field. Now we want to draw the electric field from two perspectives. And since this is Maxwell's correction to Ampere's law, we still have Amperian loops. And our Amperian loops can still be rectangular or circular. Don't want to consider any other shapes for this class. And we want to choose a shape where only one integral of b dot ds is non-zero. So we have one non-zero segment. And we also need our shape must be perpendicular to the electric field. at all times. So as we are doing this, then we want to choose one shape per region to solve. And to show that it's different than the electric field, different than any charge or current distributions, we want to use a different color or dashed lines. So for our Maxwell's correction of Ampere's law, again, we are going to kind of split this in the middle. And of course, this gets a lot more space because we haven't done it because this is going to be the exact same as we had for Ampere's law. So our closed integral of b dot ds is equal to the integral of b dot ds over segment 1 plus the integral over segment 2 of b2 dot ds and so forth. If we have a circle, it's just one segment. If we have a rectangle, it's four segments, and so on and so forth. And we want to justify that only one segment is non-zero. So only one of these terms will be non-zero. We need to justify that our magnetic field B is parallel to DS for that segment. And we need to justify the magnitude of B is constant along the segment. But the good news is, if we can sketch it out, if we can plan it out, if we can justify all this, then we're able to pull the magnetic field B out of the integral since it's constant. We don't have to worry about the dot product because everything's parallel. And so we can take an integral of just ds and so then we get that our closed integral of b dot ds becomes not an integral, but just the magnetic field at segment 1 times the delta s for segment 1 along segment 1. So if we're allowed to say this, then we get just this easy relationship. So. For our electric field over here, we want to first start by writing the 
the electric field for each region of space. So this is very similar to what we've done for the charge densities, very similar to what we've done for the current densities, very similar to what we've done for the magnetic field for each region of space. So an example might be that we have our electric field is an electric field for time for r less than some r and is equal to zero for some r greater than r. Once we have this, then for each region, our integral of e dot dA is equal to, for region A, EA dA plus integral EB dAB for region B up to the limit for that region. So if we are stopping in the first region, we just have the first integral of region A. If we go up to this region, then we do the limits of this region, start of region B up to the end. And so then we find our integral. Just a reminder that our dA is LDW for rectangular. And our dA is 2 pi r dr for circular. So once we have this, then in our solve step, we've set all of this up, and we want to then take the integral of e dot dA for each region. And then we want to take the derivative and multiply by mu naught epsilon naught, which as we can discover, mu naught epsilon naught is equal to also 1 over the speed of light squared. So once we get that, then for each region, we get that our left-hand side, B over the segment, delta S of the segment, is equal to our mu naught epsilon naught, DDT, of e dot dA and then we solve for B1. What's oftentimes nice is then to then visualize our B as a function of space. So our final sketch organized solve is the last piece of Maxwell's equations and should look very similar for having done other Maxwell's equations since it is a somewhat flip of Faraday's law and also write a correction to our Ampere's law, which we've already seen before.